Hello, in this video I will show you how to configure second generation operation panels available for Bosch Rexroth CNC controls. It is a continuation of previous videos located in YouTube under Electric Drives and Controls, CNC Controller, MTX. There are three basic sizes of generation 2 multi-touch operation displays, 15 inch VDP-15 display, 18 inch VDP-18 display, and 21 inch VDP-21. Every one of those can be configured as horizontal panel, and additionally, VDP-21 can be configured as a vertical panel. To run dedicated operation screens on those panels, we must use the program Indraworks Operation Desktop. This program can be installed just by itself on PCs dedicated to be an operating station or as a part of Indraworks workstation installation and when activated takes over entire screen of operator panel. We can test our operation screens locally in separate window using special version of this program called Indraworks Operation Simulator which is also a part of workstation installation. You can find more information about the software in a manual MTX15 VRS multi-touch. So first, we'll open the latest version of Indraworks engineering software and start my demo project. It is a three-channel machine where channel 1 is 3-axis milling station 1, channel 2 is 3-axis milling station 2, and channel 3 is a rotary table in the center. In this project, all axes and channels are configured. PLC logic is running, and all global variables that will be used by HMI and outside applications are active and ready. Next, we'll add operation panel to our project. So we go back to our library, then visualization, and here we can see all available visualization panels. So VCP, VCH are small human machine interfaces, VEP, VEH are Windows embedded terminals, VR and VH21 are very small operator panels, different variations of VP and VS panels are PC based terminals, and PRVR3 and PRVR4 are small and medium operator panels. In our project, we'll use PC-based terminals. To add it to our project, we click on tab PPX VSX and then drag and drop it into Project Explorer. New HMI Wizard window opens up and here we can configure our device. First is device type and here we'll select common setup for VDP-15 and VDP-18. System will automatically show us properties and we can see here that our panel is designed for horizontal display with a resolution of 1366 by 768 pixels. System will automatically assign it a name with computer address and will leave it unchanged. And to take advantage of ready CNC template provided by the system, we must select application type as MTX Touch application. Panel design will leave as multi-touch horizontal and device version at 15 b 14 same like entire project. After a couple seconds, new tab VDP15 shows up in our project explorer and when we click on it, we can see all editors for panel operation 
with ready initial templates. So under screens MTX are all default screens for CNC specific functions. Under top screens are all editors for general operation screens. Under top screen frame are editors for supporting panels. Under top multi-touch are configuration files for virtual push buttons and controls. And under top screen applications are configuration files and editors for custom screens. Since we selected application type as MTX touch application, most of the operation screens are pre-configured and ready to be used. So to test it, we can simply click on visualization data and then transmit and activate. Next, we must select control station. And in our case, it will be localhost. And that means my working laptop. Please note that only one operator panel configuration can be active on control station at a time. And we can verify that our VTP15 is activated when name shows up in bold letters. Next, we'll start in Drawworks operation software. Please note that VTP15 and VTP18 operation panels have a resolution of 1366 by 768 pixels. My engineering laptop has a resolution of 1920 by 1080. And that means, in order to show right proportion of my operator panel, I must run it in simulation mode in its own window. So next we click on Indorex Operation Simulator icon and our operation display shows up, properly simulating real panel. When we use standard desktop version of Indorex Operation software, we can see right away that some windows are stretched and our visualization will be different on the real panel. To close this desktop, first we click on Maintenance button and then Exit Interworks. From now on, to test our operation screens, we'll always use Simulator. And additional benefit of it is that we can start Simulator directly from engineering software. So first, let's compare default interface structures and see typical configurations for different types of operating panels. We'll start with 15-inch panel we just added to our project. So on the top, there is a header and machine status area. On the left, there is a machine key panel then there's a taskbar, application area, function keys assigned with applications and functions, and then operating area keys assigned with function to switch between operating areas. On the right side, there's a virtual push button panel, and it can be switched to be additional operating area. Next, let's see how those panels look on typical machine. So on the header we can see machine name, channel name, channel status, and active diagnostic messages. Here we can also add program progress display. On the virtual control panel we added a couple rectangle buttons, round buttons, and sliders. So we can use them to change feed rate override and then use buttons to start program. In application area, we can see program running and actual positions. When we switch to manual mode, new application area with the machine panel 
and your virtual control panel opens up. So we can select job mode, then select axis, and then jog it plus and jog it minus. When we click on home control tab, system opens for us additional operating area where we can call favorite functions and applications. For example, a button for fast switching our application area to show next channel, or a button to switch our application area to show two channels. Next, let's see 21 inch horizontal panel. So we'll go back to our project and drag and drop second VPVS panel. This time we'll select it to be VDP 21 horizontal. And we can see that it will have dimensions 1920 by 1080 pixels. We'll give it a name VDP 21 underscore H. In our Project Explorer, new element shows up and it has all default screens and templates. We can start Operation Simulator and here is our HMI. We can see here that all HMI panels on the left side and the header are the same like in 15 inch version, just bigger. Right side is different and here virtual van is separated from additional operating area. So here is an example of the same machine with 21 inch panel in automatic mode and in manual mode. Next, let's see 21 inch panel in vertical layout. So we drag and drop third panel Select it to be VDB21 vertical and name it VDB21 underscore V. After starting a simulation, our virtual panel looks like this. So here are operating area with all keys and header, virtual RAM, and additional operating area. And here we can see it on simple machine. Next, we'll go back to our default VTP15 panel to work on details of available functions of operation screens and the steps to modify them. So let's start with the header. First, status area. Here we can see active mode of operation channel status and active symbols for channel comprehensive control states. The list of all those symbols is available in our manual in chapter 4. Next elements of header are logo, machine name and channel names. Those elements are initially set to default values and can be modified to fit our machine. Please note that operation panels can be edited in two places. Some can be modified with editors inside Indoor's engineering software, and some, to make editing easier, can be made directly on the operator panel. So let's try to edit header in Project Explorer. First, we click on screen frame, then header, and then header settings. And here we have a note that header settings can be edited directly in operator panel. So back in our panel, here we point on status field, then touch and hold for at least two seconds. New editor window opens up and to indicate that editor is active, our status bar is shaking. Additionally, system automatically activates for us virtual keyboard in case we work with touchscreen only. So first, let's change user logo. And here, as an example, I will change it with old Rexroth logo 
just to see how it works. Next, we click OK, and right away we can see our modification ready and active. This is a big advantage of making a changes direct on the panel. So let's go back to header configurator and give our machine a name, for example, training demo, then name all channels. So channel one is station one, channel two is station two, and channel three is named main table. Here we can also activate additional displays for control and program progress, but they require special PLC logic, so we'll add them later, and we'll put our logo back to default. Right away we can see active your machine name and your name for channel 1. Please note that when we use built-in MTX Touch application initial template, system automatically create for us those operation keys and they are ready to use. All those keys are described in manual in chapter 3.4 and we'll test this part of our header editor using channel dialog op 6. So when we click on it, list of channels shows up and all channel names are updated. To change active channel, we click and highlight it and then press apply channel. So here's station two active on our display. Next, we'll do it again. And now channel three main table is active. Before going back to our header editor, let's go to op6 channel editor again and please take a look on a taskbar for this operation. We can see new element called burger menu button. When we click on it, burger menu containing rarely used operating functions opens up. So here we can switch view and see our channels organized as tiles, set the channel filter, or have an overview of all active events. This last function opens parallel to our main operation and shows on the taskbar as additional element. So we can easily switch between this function and main operation. To close this function, we can use an active application button. So let's switch our display to station one, go back to header editor and work on diagnostic messages. There are two areas on the header where diagnostic messages are presented. First field is diagnostic message status. Here, depending on active diagnostics, those message symbols are showing up. Second is two lines area where diagnostic messages text can be presented. This field is configurable and every line can be edited separately directly from operation screen. So we'll point on the first line and then touch and hold for at least two seconds. Editor opens up and here we can decide which type of message will be presented in this line. By default, only errors will be displayed and we'll leave it that way. Next, we select to show icon with message text. And when multiple messages are active at the same time, we'll show on the last one. Last is a message changing time. It is by default set to three seconds. So let's make it a little faster and change it to 100 milliseconds. Next, let's test it. I have a logic and message text already prepared. And first, I'll activate error one. We can see right away an icon and message text. Next, I'll create a second error. For example, error 10. And we can see that last message takes over message field. 
So let's go back to our editor and deselect on the last message tab. Next, we create arrow 1 and then arrow 10. Now we can see both error messages in text field, but they are toggling very fast. We can fix it by going back to editor and increase message changing time to, for example, one second. Now, when two errors are active at the same time, we can read them much easier. Next, we'll work on second line of messages. So again, we point on this line, then touch and hold for at least two seconds, and editor opens up. Here we'll leave a default selection of warnings and notes, activate icon together with text, and set message changing time to one second. So here is message or note active, here is warning active, and here are both of them active. Please note that additionally to header, there is a special operation area dedicated for diagnostics. And it is OP9 Diagnostic Overview Area. So when we click on it, Operation screen opens up, and here we can see a list of active messages. So there's our warning, note, and error. For every message, there are three fields where we can put some additional information. First is a full description of message. Second, most likely cause of message activation. And third is a suggestion how to recover from it. All those messages can be logged into logbook. But first, we must configure this logbook. Editor to configure one or more logbooks is located in Project Explorer. Please note that after any change here, when we transfer and activate or just start Operation Simulator, we'll override our active operation configuration. That will also change back all our modifications to a header we made recently direct in Operation Screen. So it is very important to first load changes from Operation Station. That will save in our project all modifications we made there. Now we can click on Tab Logbook, then Add Logbook, and new tab shows up. When we click on it, Logbook Editor opens up. First, we must select how many messages are to remain in the logbook. A default is 500, and we'll leave it that way. Since Operator Panel can work with multiple controls, we need to select where to collect messages from. And last, we need to select what messages to log, and we'll take default system errors, then custom errors, warnings, and notes. Next, we activate Operation Simulator, open Diagnostic screen, and create a couple errors, warnings, and notes. Next, when we click on Logbook button, we can see a list of recorded messages. If it's needed for our records, we can export this list into ASCII, CVS, or XML file. Next, we'll work on user configurable push button panel called Virtual VAM. When we look into Project Explorer, then Multi-Touch, and then Virtual VAMs, we can see that configuration 
can be stored here, but editing is done in a control station. So back in operation, same like with the header, to edit this panel we need to touch and hold virtual VAM button for 2 seconds. We can see all buttons shaking and that means we are in edit mode. When we click on any button and then click on editing, new screen opens up and here we can configure our button. So we can set a type, text and text size inside of the button, eventual icon inside of the button and the way how this button operates. But most important in this configuration are PLC variables this button works with. So first is variable key. Here we'll put the name of PLC variable that will be set to logical status true when we push this button. Next is a variable LED and when this variable is set in the logic a small LED light in a button lights up and the last is variable inactive and when this variable is set in a logic our button is deactivated. All those PLC variables available for our HMI are supposed to show up in this window. But in order for this to happen, we must set them in our PLC logic. So back in our project, I already prepared those variables for our virtual VAM and they are all located in global variables list. When we go online with our logic, we can see that those variables are active and then when we open additional window process variables we can see right away what signals from our control are available for outside applications. So we can access system parameters, configuration parameters and signals related to channels and axes but no signals from our PLC logic. In order to make our global variables available, we must put them into symbol file. So we go offline and then click on symbol configuration. A list of available symbol groups shows up and we mark our global variable list. Next, we recompile and download and we can see new element logic in our process variables. When we extend it, we can see that all variables from global variable list are available. Please note that every time this list is changed, it requires reactivation of symbol selection. And there is a way to automatically update symbol file using Pragma. What is Pragma? Let's check with help file. So we click on index. Then type Pragma and then select Use. Here is a definition of Pragma. When we click on Attributes, we'll get a list of available Pragmas and next we'll select Attribute Symbol. Here we can see detailed description of this Pragma with examples how to use it. And here is a command we'll use in our global variable list. Back in our logic, first we'll deselect our global variable list from symbol configuration, then go to editor for this list and add our pragma attribute command for all following variables. Next, compile and download. We can see all variables still available in process variable list and in symbol configurator, since our global variable list is added automatically, it does not show up in selection list. So now in operation simulator, when we edit our button again, we can see right away an active list of available signals coming from our global variable list. Next, we can simply drag and drop variables from this list. So light LT Auto goes into field variable LED 
and push button PV auto goes into field variable key. Next, we'll put text auto into text field and select it to work direct and when pushed to stay permanent on. Next, we'll exit configuration and test it. We can see right away that still something is wrong or missing because our button is still grayed out. And when we push on it, a message no safe signal transmission to the PLC shows up and we must use a function block IL HMI keys. So we go back to our project, then to library manager and here we will add the new library RIL HMI utilities. Now we can look inside of this library and see our function block IL HMI keys. When we click on it, we can see more information about this function block. So here are all inputs and outputs. Here is graphical presentation. And here is detailed documentation. Next, we'll add this function block to our logic. So we'll open program PR general, then add new network, and then insert empty box. When we click on the type and then on supporting icon, input assistant opens up and here we can find library and select our function block. Next, we name it FBM key and system will auto declare it for us. Please note that for this function block to work properly, it must be included in symbol file. So I will not declare it locally in program PR general, but globally in our global variables list. System automatically opens for us this list. We can see our function block declared here, and it will be written to symbol file together with all other variables during next download. Back in program PR general, first we will delete this initial contact and make input enable always on, and then remove unused function block call parameters. Next, compile and download. We can see program running and global variables active. The last thing we need to do is to configure our HMI to work with this function block. So we click on VDP 15, then properties, and then communication. Here we have a field instance of M key function block. When we click on the icon next to it, process variables window opens up and here we can select our function block. Next, we apply those changes and start operation simulator. We can see right away that our button is operating and we can verify it by simultaneously looking into active variable list. When we push our button, we can see that variable PP auto changes status to true. Now we can focus again on virtual VAM editor. Default configuration of this panel is 5 by 8 buttons. But if you want bigger buttons and different arrangement, we can configure our own. So we click on new and editor opens up. So we'll give it a name VAM test. To make our buttons bigger, we put only 3 of them per line and change number of lines to 7. 
We can also change the distance between the lines, but for now we'll leave it at default value. So we'll make our first button again to be automatic mode selection with added icon. Then we can verify it right away and if needed edit again to for example change a text size. Next we'll make a button to select NDI mode. This button is very similar to auto button, so we'll just copy it and then paste to next location. Next we can edit it and change variables, text and icon. Next we'll repeat it again and create a button to select manual mode. There are three default VAM configurations. First is VAM automatic using configuration file vamautomatic.xml. This configuration is used in automatic and MDI operation. Second is VAM manual using configuration file vammanual.xml, typically for manual operation. And third is VAM general using configuration file vam.xml, typically for counter operation. In our case, initially, we'll use this panel in automatic mode. So we'll save it as vamautomatic.xml. Next, we'll set the response time to 100 milliseconds then exit configuration and we are ready to test it. So we click on MDI button, control switches to MDI mode, in application an F keys area fields related to MDI shows up with dedicated field where we can type our MDI command and to make it easier system automatically opens for us a virtual keyboard. Please note that machine key panel also automatically changes to one for MDI mode. Back in virtual VAM, next we'll click on manual button. Here also system, application area and supporting panels all switch to manual and the same is with our virtual VAM we switch to default configuration vammanual.xml. So to fix it for now, we'll open vamautomatic.xml file and then save it as vam manual. Now we have the same mode selection buttons for all modes. Next, we'll make a slider for feed rate override. So we edit the left button then select slider, then dimensions, three keys, horizontal, then for variable key, we'll select integer global variable, FOVRD, we'll use the same variable for variable LED, next we pick an icon, and then we set the maximum to 120. So let's test it. We can slide it and see value of feed rate overwrite changing. Next we can copy the slide and make a second one for spindle override, but this time we set the lower limit to 45%. Next we'll make a couple of round buttons in this area. So first button is power on. And here only additional step we need to do is to select a design to be a round button. Next is power off button and we are ready to test it. We can see that round button does not have an LED light but when activated changes color. The last round button we'll add in this row is control reset button. Since all those buttons 
will be used in both automatic and manual mode. We'll save this configuration also into VAM manual XML file. And when we switch modes, all buttons are available. Next, we'll add buttons dedicated to automatic mode. So here is a big Start All Stations button. And it has the dimensions of two by two keys. Next is vertical hit hold key. And it has the dimensions of one by two keys. Third is a horizontal Start Active Channel button. And it has the dimensions two by one keys. And the last is standard button to activate all programs. So, let's test it. First, we set feed rate and spindle overrides to 100%, then power on our machine, and then activate all programs. We can see control ready to run, an active program. Next, we can start all stations and see program running. When we click on the pit hold button, machine stops and we can continue program execution by pressing start again. When we click on the reset button, program will be interrupted and reset to the beginning. Next, we'll switch to MDI mode. Here, additionally to MDI command field, virtual keyboard opens up. And we'll use this keyboard to type command G0, X0, Y0, Z0. Next, we'll activate this command using button Start Active Channel, and our axis X, Y, and Z move back to position 0. Next, we'll add buttons dedicated to manual mode. So, here are buttons to select and jog axis. And here are buttons to manually start and stop spindle. But first, we'll add a jog mode selection. MTS control supports four continuous and five incremental jog modes. In our machine, we'll use only one medium mode for continuous jog and four basic increments for incremental jog. To select those modes, we'll use push button panel on the left side of our operation screen called M key panel. The editor for this panel is located in Project Explorer under Screen Frame and then M panels. Please remember before editing any of those panels to load changes from operating station. Next, we can look into already provided M panels and there is a panel that automatically opens when we switch to manual mode. It is named Global Manual Left Jog Distance. When we click on it, editor opens up and here, same like with Virtual VAM, for any button there are assigned PLC variables. So we need a variable to change status when we push a button, a variable to show button active, a variable to block a button, and a variable to hide a button. We can make those multiple variables for every button, like we did with virtual VAM keys, but there's also available a different way to do it by using structures. So here's my structure called key. When we compare it to our M panel, we can see that it has elements matching variables for this panel. 
So in our global variables declaration, for every M panel button, there is assigned only one variable type key. When we look into process variables, we can see how every button is represented, and here we can simply drag and drop them into our M panel. So for job continuous button, variable right goes into variable field and variable active goes into activating field. Next, we do the same for button jog one millimeter, which is thousand increments. Here also, variable active goes to field activating and variable right goes to field right. Next, we do the same for buttons jog 01, jog 0 0.01, and jog 0.001. Next, let's start our operational simulator and test it. Here we can simultaneously see our M keys and active PLC variables, and the variable jog count dot active is set to true by the logic, and color of the button is also changed. Next, when we click on jog1 button, variable jog1000.write becomes true. That switches system to jog1000 mode. Variable jog1000.active is set to true, and our button changes color. Next, we can check it for other buttons, and switch back to continuous mode. Going back to our virtual BAM, first we'll select X axis, and when we push jog plus and jog minus, we can see axis moving continuously. Next, we'll switch to jog 1 millimeter and select Y axis. Now, when we push jog plus and minus, axis moves only 1 millimeter. Next, the same with Z axis and jog 0.01 millimeter. So we can see that our virtual VAM for manual and M key panel are working properly. Back to automatic mode, let's look into some functions of application area available for us. When we click on editor of active program, we can see and modify it here, and when we click on Burger menu, additional functions shows up, and we can save program, print it, start automatic numbering, and so on. We can also see active corrections and offsets, and if needed, we can click on more functions and switch operating area to two-channel display. Here we can select which channels to show, and then when we start all stations, see machine running. Now when we have all logic to run our machine, we'll edit our header again and add new element, a program progress indicator. New diagnostic gauge shows up, but it is grayed out, and that means we need to add some logic for it. There is a standard function block dedicated to check program progress, and we can see it in library manager, then library MT base additional, then POUs channel NNC program, and here's our function block, empty channel and C program progress. Next, we'll add this function block to our logic at the end of program PR channels. So we'll name it 
CH1 progress, set input enable to always true, set input consider begin end to false, deactivate inputs progress begin and progress end, set channel number to 1, and your structure channel interface 01 in for incoming channel signals. On the output side, we write output in operation to local variable CH1 in operation and write program data output into special variable ST channel 01 program progress. This variable must be type MT channel program progress and be placed in symbol file. So during auto declare, we'll select it to be global in global variable list. Here is our declaration, and we need to add two attribute pragmas one for namespace HMI header and second to put it into symbol file for read only. Back in our program, we'll finish our logic by removing all unused function block parameters. Next, compile and download, and we'll start our program again. Our program progress dial is still grayed out, but after program execution is finished, Progress dial is activated and shows us measured program execution time, in our case, 47 seconds. When we restart the same program again, the dial will show us time remaining till program finish, or when we click on it, it will show us program progress in percents. So we finished header, virtual VAM, and M key panel, and next we'll work on additional operating area. First, we'll click on Home Control tab. Here, we can have easy access to all our favorite functions and applications organized as tiles. There are two applications already configured for us. First is program selection. Here we can see files and directories to select our program, and the second tile is NC Cockpit, where we can watch a simulation of our part being cut. So here's our part, and next we'll start a program. First, we'll mill the surface using tool 103, then we cut a circle using tool 101, and then we get a diamond square using tool 102. Back to home control of additional operating area, we can add more functions and applications by simply pointing on home tab and touch and hold it for at least two seconds. Now we are in edit mode, here we can set our tiles to be large or small, and then we can edit those tiles. List of available functions and applications opens up. And first, let's pick, for example, to channel display. New tile is added. Next, we can exit configuration. And now, when we click on this tile, system right away switches us to, to channel display. Next, let's add more tiles, for example, Spanish language selection and channel reset. Next, when we click on Spanish, all buttons and diagnostic messages here as well as all parts of NC screens are switched to Spanish. Of course, to switch back to English, we must add a new tile, English. Next, let's look on other functions 
of additional operating area. Here is next tab, monitor and service functions. First, we click on monitor. And here we can see load distribution of the individual NC kernel tasks. Next is a note function. Here we can make user specific notes and store them on a tab. Next is stopwatch function. And the last one here is a screenshots function. Next major tab is position and block progress display. Here we can see program running together with simulation. The last part of additional operating area is computer tab. And here we have handy calculator, taper calculations, thread calculations, circumference calculations, tolerances calculations, polar calculations, and speed calculations. So now our operation panel is ready. And that will conclude our video presentation. But before we finish, please do not forget to load changes from operating station to your project. Thank you for your attention.